In this video, we're going to focus on how we can position the title of a scale on the other side, on the right side here. In this case, it's for the Y title. We're going to put it on this side. So let's start to explore how to do this. So let's start to look how to place the Y scale title on the right side in Chart.js. So to do this, the first thing we need is, of course, our default code. So we're going to get our default code on chartjs3.com, getting started this specific link here which you can also find in the description box. Once you're on the site, scroll down and copy this entire chunk of code here. Copy this. And if you want to understand what this code does, make sure you watch this video here that explains it all. I want to paste this all in there. Once I did that, I will just cut out this title here, put the title in there. Save this and then refresh, there we are. So now we have this here, but of course we want to have the skill title. So to do that, we are not able to get the default scale title here, if you scroll down here on this, on the Y axis, we can just say a comma and then we say uh, title, and then we're going to say a display true. So this will not work by the way, so I'm just going to show you. And then what we want to have here, here the text, and the text would be leads, for example. If I save that, refresh, there we are. So we have this here, but I'm not able to move that here. However, this is an interesting fact is or this is a, this is part is interesting is when we add up here this item there's some space between here so what we have to do is we have to create this so-called space here as well so let's start to work on that so what I'm going to do here because I'm going to create a custom plugin for it I'm going to say options and then in the options we're going to say a layout in the layout I'm going to put in a padding and what is the padding exactly going to do is to add up here additional padding so we have some space here very similar to what we have here so padding and then i'm going to say here this will be right now let's say 25 pixels maybe 30 pixels depends on your on your case but let's save this 25 there we are so we have now 25 pixels in space which is quite sufficient so now what i want to do is i want to add up of course this title item that i need to make here but of this will not be possible so this basically could be deleted but what i need to do here now is go create a custom plugin so I go in the options here I put a comma and then I'm going to say a plugin so then I'm going to create a new plugin and let's say this plugin will be right side title or label doesn't matter copy this and I'm going to create here a constant and then here we're going to say ID equal and then here this will be equal to right side title I tend to use them all consistent but of course you can give it any other name you want here although it's easier for to have it consistent but in our case we won't be using this so it doesn't matter at all so then what I'm going to do here is what we want to do is I want to draw this title after the data set has been drawn and the reason why after this is what we call timing is we don't want it to overlap the tooltip if we would do after drawing the entire chart and then we have a title if the tooltip will show up that title text will overlap on the clap uh, on the cloud here of the tooltip so we don't want that so i want to make sure that the tooltip is always on top and visible so what i'm going to say here after data sets draw so once the data set has been drawn then i'm going to draw this and what is this exactly first of all three objects i'm going to use chart and chart is the only one i'm going to use i'll put in here the arc and the plugin options but we will not be using the last two so then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do an object destruction. This chart here is basically this specific variable here, which is the, my chart, which is a chart object we created here, which is from chart.js. So what I'm going to do here now is the following. I'm going to say here constant. I'm going to do here a uh, object destructuring because the chart has so many values and variables that you want to use as well. So I'm going to say here equals chart. And then what I want to do is basically what is it? What is uh, what is a object destructuring? Is for example, if one object has multiple values within, we can split them out and use a shorthand. So instead of, for example, ctx dot chart or sorry chart dot ctx, I only want to use the ctx. To do that, I need to say here ctx, which is within the chart, so it understands that. And of course, we have more. I need the chart area, and within the chart area, I need to have left. I'm going to use all of these items, right, top, bottom, width, and height. And make sure you spell it correctly. 
All right, so now we have this here, and these are probably the ones we need. If you want to understand this truly in depth, I have a video. It's called Understanding Chart Area and Chart Yes, which is very, very useful because with when you understand the chart area, you can do so many things related to positioning. So now, if you're wondering, what is CTX? Well, CTX basically refers to this canvas ID here, so we can draw on the canvas. CTS stands for context, and basically it's to draw on the canvas itself. So what I want to draw here, of course, is to draw text, and I want to put it in there. So let's start to work on this. So I'm going to say here CTX, and then what I'm going to do here first is CTX.save to save all variables above. Secondly, then what I want to do here now is just to make it simple, I'm going to give it a color. So I'm going to say CTX.fill uh, style, and the fill style will be a consistent color with the default of charges, which is hashtag triple six. So once we have that, I want another item, which is basically the CTX dot, and I'm going to say fill text. And this is the text that we want to put in and the exact coordinates. So I'm going to do here the following. Once the elites, that is the item, and here we have the X and Y coordinates. The X and Y coordinates here will be dependent on left, right, top, and bottom. So if you're wondering what is this chart area in short, so in essence, this is the top line, so that's the top pixel coordinates. This is the bottom pixel coordinate. This is the left side, right side. And you have the width, which would be from this left point all the way to the right. And then you have the height, which is from top to bottom. The difference here, or the amount of pixels here. So if I, for example, want to put it here, let's first draw some text. So I'm going to say here 0, 0.0. So you see here, the coordinates will start at the corner here. So if I refresh, you can see your leads, and of course it's being chopped off or clipped away the top part. And the reason why is because the baseline is somewhere in the center or somewhere top, and that's just the way it works. So what I want to do here now is I want to push this down and go there. So how do you push this down? Well, first of all, I want to go down here in the center of the Y, or sorry, of the X. So because of that, we already know the we have here the uh, height. So the height would be this, but the height is only from top to here. So what we need to do is this remaining part here, we need to plus this or add up, and that's the top part, so top plus height. So let me show you. If I only say top, save, refresh, you can see, oh, sorry, of course. So what, what's going on here? This is the X, which is the horizontal value, and this is the Y, which is the vertical value. So I want to go back here on zero, and I'm going to say here top. Save this and then refresh. You can see you now we're going down and we're now nicely aligned with this line here. But I don't want that. I want to go here. If I get here the the, um, the height, what will happen if I save this? We go all down here. I don't want that as well. But what I want is I want the height divided by two. So I'm going to say divide this by two. And then what I will do is because of mathematics, there's a priority. The division or multiplication will be prioritized over the plus or the sum. So that's why we do it like that. So we'll divide first by two and then plus whatever it is. So now we're in the center here. So that's step one. So now what I want to do is here on the X scale, we want to go here. So let's move that all the way there. And then later on you will see we will have to do some adjustments. And that's the, that's the most tricky part here of rotations. So don't worry about it. I'm going to cover that as well. So the next thing what I want to do here is I want to start moving this to that side here. Uh, how do we do that? We have here the width plus we have the left here. So we're going to do here width plus left. If I save this, refresh, there we are. And then maybe because you can see we are hitting still this part here, we could do maybe 10 pixels additional, let's say plus 10. So we are allowed to do not more than 25 because 25 is that, but remember our font, I'm going to give it later a font size, is maybe 12 pixels, so that's why we have that. All right, so now we have this here, we have about 15 pixels leeway or uh, space for the text when we rotate it. So now we have this positioning item here, although, uh, or let me just warn you, later on we have to adjust this one. So there will be some adjustments on this. So now what I'm going to do here is the following. I'm going to play around with, uh, let's say here, the font, ctx.font. And then here, I'm going to say, I want to make this bolder. So it's a bold color or bold. You can say bold or bolder or thin, doesn't matter. You have multiple values. 
stock pixels and then the fan font family will be sans serif which is the default in the canvas save that refresh all right so you see it's becoming bold but of course it's not really converted into the right shape or ro rotation so what i'm going to do now and this is the most important part so i'm going to say here just below the save i'm going to say your ctx.translate and this part is also for me sometimes a real tricky one so basically what it says now we want to rotate but what i want to rotate is not the entire canvas i want to rotate only this item here and that's why we have the translate here we say we're going to create now a new item and this item you could see it almost like a piece of paper or you have a, a picture you cut it out and you put it on a piece of paper and you can start to rotate that so what happens is it will only rotate that that picture instead of the paper where it's on top of so if we save this now and refresh nothing really happens here you can see it's still in the same position however now we get the rotation and now we're going to get here the real tricky part so let me first get here the angle of the rotation the constant angle equals math dot pi with capital i and t divided by 180 so if you're wondering why am i doing this math dot pi is basically this it's a circle, but pi, one pi equals a half circle, meaning 180 degrees. Two pi would equal 360 degrees. So that's why I'm dividing it now by 180. So I want to have only the angle here, and probably we need to have like 90 degrees, or we need 270, it's one or the other. So let's save that, refresh. Nothing happens here, of course. So then what I'm going to do here is the following. I'm going to say a CTX dot rotate, and now we're going to get here. The amount of degrees we want so let me show you first of all the starting point so 0 and 360 is basically identical so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do here 5 or let's do 1 degree difference multiplied by our angle so remember math dot pi is a half circle so I divide this so I only have one degree basically I'm just saying here one degree so if I save this and then I'm going to save here Oh, all right, so we get some issues here, fair enough. What I need to do here, and the reason why this happens is, first of all, you see it's moving, why? If I hover over it, there's like a uh, animation going on here. So I want to block this. So I want to make sure we block this, we're going to say here, ctx.restore to reset. After we did our item, we want to restore it back to original position. However, what I don't want to restore is this item here. You can see here, it, if you look carefully, you see it's not really straight. It's slightly in an angle. So let's put in 5 so you may, might be able to see it better. As we move, you can see it's now starting to move as well. And this is the real tricky part here because it's moving. And if I'm not mistaken, the line is somewhere here or the angle is somewhere in this corner. It's very, very hard for me as well to figure that one out. However, the value eventually we need because we want to rotate it in this same position. That will mean if this is 5 and going down like this, we want to rotate it here all up, which is 270. Why? The 0 is basically uh, pointing west. And this is west, it's like from left to right in this case. So that's west. So if I want to make like this, this is the northern point. So I need to go 270 degrees, 270 degrees. All right, if I save this, refresh, it's gone. So you might say, what's going on here? This is the trick. Because we're starting here basically with 0.0, .0 so the rotation should be basically in here. And what happens is it starts to turn and goes all the way up. So basically it is up here. So what I need to do now is what we calculated here as left and right is now the opposite. Because now, because it's now like a, a rotated version of 270 degrees, so that will mean that it's not anymore like a horizontal rectangle, it's a vertical rectangle. I hope you can follow along with it. This is the most tricky part. That's why I struggle myself as well. So what I'm going to do is I need to just switch these numbers. And then as well, because we're up in the top here, so we need to go into negatives. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do first of all, well, what I'm going to do is just going to copy this entire item. And then I will comment out the other one here above. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, I'm going to cut out this. I'm going to move this in here, put a comma there. And later on we can see if this is correct. And then what I want to do here is I want to say here this height divided by 2. But now instead of 
a positive 2, I need to do negative. So I say here, divide by minus 2, so it will become a negative value. If I save this, refresh, you can see it starts to work, but we're not 100% there. The reason why is because we have here the plus 2, which should be exactly in a, I guess, in a mirroring position or reverse position, which is a minus 2. We need to deduct as well. Put it in there. All right. So now you can see here, we say, well, hold on. We're not really in the center yet. That is correct. So let's fix this correctly. So what I'm going to do here is enter ctx dot text align equal this is a string value so center save this and to make make sure of course we have here semicolon save refresh all right so we're now in the center but you might say hold on we're too close to the to the point here that is correct so first we had 10 that would look perfect however now now we're too close because we're exactly in a mirroring position so we need to do here maybe 20 if we do that there we are uh, and that looks quite nice and that's basically how we can play around with this so what i want to do next is of course remove this item here and we could maybe even extend this one here if you want to make this 30 that would maybe look even nicer if i do this 30 save there we are so we have some space here at the back or at the side here and i'm going to remove this one now so let's remove this here we don't need this this was just as a demo to show you what we want to have there we are. So now we have this one here, and that's basically it. Of course, we can also do it for the upper part, but that will be a separate video. So if you enjoyed this video and you want to know, as I said earlier, about the chart area, which is absolutely phenomenal and important to understand, please watch this video here. Understanding the chart area in ChartJS, this will give you so much extra options. And once you understand this, you are really understanding how to position items within the canvas itself.